Without fail, every 20 minutes or so, John Progress insists that the clothes on the line are safe from rain because his lumbago isn't acting up. Besides, it's not going to rain today. My lumbago isn't acting up. Growing up, I didn't know what lumbago was. It sounded like an Italian pasta dish, or maybe a 1970s era station wagon. But neither of those made sense in the context of the Carousel of Progress. Without knowing what it was, or how it acts up, or how either would have anything to do with the rain, I decided to find out. So let's look at the history and quirks of lumbago. To offer a somewhat generalized and short answer, lumbago is lower back pain. And in an interesting way, that generalized answer is probably the best answer because while it was once a catch-all term for any kind of lower back pain, the definition started to shrink as the field of medicine improved and we started to learn all of the specific and different ways a person could experience pain in that area. Lumbago, as a term, is old. Like, really old. We're talking 1800 to 2000 years old. One of the more commonly cited sources was a man named Sextus Pompeius Festus. He was a second century Roman grammarian, which to put simply meant that he taught grammar, or the correct way of speaking. Festus, during his career, wrote an abridged version of an earlier work called De Viborum Significatu, or On the Meaning of Words. It was a 40-volume Latin dictionary written by a man named Marcus Varius Flaccus. That abridged version Festus wrote was 20 books long, which makes me wonder if Festus really knew what an abridgment was. I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah, 20 books is a lot less than 40 books, but it's still 20 books. Come on, Festus. While writing it, he took the liberty to pull out a few words that had already grown obsolete and threw in a few words that he felt were missing. His version contained the word lumbago, which was defined as vitium et debilitas laborum, or a defective condition and weakness of the loins. Now, was that added in his version of the work, or was it part of the original? That's hard to say since the original work doesn't exist anymore. We have nothing to compare it to. Eventually, in the 8th century, a historian named Paulus Diaconus further abridged Festus's not-so-abridged version, and then later in the 16th century, Diaconus's work was discovered and published. And so lumbago survived on as a term, and eventually worked its way into the medical lexicon. It evolved some, and by the early 19th century, lumbago was defined as pain or rheumatism in the loins. As wild as it sounds today, it took some time before people began to realize and accept that such back pain was caused by physical trauma to the back. Like many ailments, there was a belief that it was caused by forces outside of their control and unrelated to the actions they took. It would take the Industrial Revolution, particularly the spread of railroads and the unfortunate spike in work-related injuries that followed, to finally paint the picture that too much stress and injury on the back could cause lumbago. And even then, that didn't stop others from claiming that there were different causes. Here's a kidney pill ad that claimed that the prevalence of lumbago amongst firefighters was caused by how wet they'd get on the job. But hey, don't worry firefighters, take those kidney pills and you'll be back in action in no time. All right, but what about all that rain nonsense? How would John use his back pain to predict the weather? Well, the legend has less to do with the rain itself, but instead the drop in barometric pressure that comes along right before it rains. Many believe that such a drop causes the back pain to flare up, creating this supposed superpower to know when the weather is about to turn. So is it true? Well, probably not, but the legend still persists to this day. Multiple studies have been done to try and get to the bottom of the myth, with results pointing in both directions. In 2007, a study published in the American Journal of Medicine found that among 200 patients, knee pain was reported to increase when barometric pressure increased. Now, 200 patients is a pretty small sample size, but if we accept these results, it actually lines up with John Progress and what he has to say. This study linked the pain increase to an increase in barometric pressure, but typically the barometric pressure decreases before it rains. So it would make perfect sense that his lumbago wouldn't act up right before the storm. 
In 2014, the American College of Rheumatology published a study that concluded that there was no connection between weather conditions and musculoskeletal pain. Also, musculoskeletal sounds like a villain in a comic book. A few years later, a 2017 Harvard study, perhaps the largest on the subject by tracking 1.5 million patients over four years, also concluded that local rain didn't impact joint or muscle pain. But even that study concedes that there still might be an association, since they just track doctor visits and weather, and realistically, most people aren't going to go to the doctor for some back pain they are used to. The study, as well as others, mentions that, quote, the persistence of this belief may reflect the tendency of people to perceive patterns where none exist. They might remember the times that their back pain lined up with the rain and forget the times it didn't. Or they might know rain is on the way and end up paying more attention to what they feel in their back. It could also be possible that perhaps some specific types of back pain are more sensitive to those changes than others. Ultimately, the jury is still out. John Progress's lumbago line is perfect. The Carousel of Progress was built with the intention of capturing a snapshot of what American life was like throughout the 20th century. And it did. People suffered from back pain and they called it lumbago. And they were often raised to believe that it would flare up before it rained. It was a lore that has lived on, so much so that even today, we don't fully know for sure how true it is or isn't. I guess except in this case. In this case, we know that John was 100% wrong. <laughs>